when the guns finally fell silent in November 1918. The world in Dubbo erupted in jubilation. The news reached Dubbo at around 9 p.m. on November the 11th. In the absence of a mass communication system, the fire bell was rung, signaling to all the momentous news that the war was over. The news, along with the noise and joy, spread quickly throughout the town. Somewhere about nine o'clock, the church bells rang, the locomotive whistles shrilled, and a thousand noisy means were adopted to manifest the popular joy at the arrival of the anxiously awaited news that the armistice was signed by the beaten enemy. At first, the noise was of a tentative and spasmodic nature, here and there. A citizen seized a bell or a bucket, but most frequently a kerosene tin, and belted it with vigour until his neighbours came out and whacked a sheet of galvanised iron with a broom handle, or used a box as a kettle drum. Citizens from across the town gathered in Macquarie Street. Spontaneous parades and demonstrations began, singing and dancing. Staid and solemn citizens performed kangaroo hops and turkey trots and bellowed like cows and carried buckets suspended around their necks and shrieked and howled with every manifestation of joy. If we mention the names of those citizens, you would be surprised. Nothing hitherto has stirred them out of a most dignified walk or a carefully modulated hear, hear at a public meeting. They simply went wild with the mob. They lit crackers and let them off as if they were once more in knickerbockers. One most dignified citizen was seen dragging three kerosene tins along the road on a rope. The celebrations then took on a distinctly European feel. When the mayor announced the signing of the armistice from the balcony of the Mechanics Institute, Mr V. Alder sang the Marseillaise in spirited style, the whole crowd joining in the chorus. Crowds marched this way and that way in splendid disorder, but everyone was happy. Thursday the 14th of November was declared Thanksgiving Day, a public holiday for citizens of Dubbo. A Grand Street Parade was arranged, a combined religious service and a civic reception. On a hot spring day, a crowd of thousands made its way to Victoria Park, listened patiently to official speeches and gave three cheers for the King and the Prime Minister. It soon became known that something was doing in Victoria Park and everyone repaired thither to take part. The Dubbo Citizens Band, under Bandmaster Cliff Brown, appeared in the rotunda and after a certain degree of quiet and order had been restored, played the national anthem to the accompaniment of tremendous cheering. The celebrations had not ceased at breakfast time and, as we write at 10 o'clock, the cacophony of the kerosene tin band is borne to our distracted ears from the street. There were hundreds of young girls out, yet none complained of the slightest familiarity. Dubbo citizens were too supremely happy that the long dark night of the worst war on record had ended after four years and four months of activity that they had no time for anything else. <laughs>